Hello friends and welcome back to The Word. I'm still Dickiness Shewa and our topic for today is and the oil ceased and the oil ceased. Could you think of that? For the oil to cease. How can you interpret the word oil? To me, oil can be a source, a source of wealth, a source of greatness, a source of pleasure, a kind of thing that gives confidence and you know, yes, you're heading somewhere great. You're getting out of debt. It could be anything. But for it to cease can be very sad or devastating. But let's dig into the word and see a situation in the Bible where it was stated that the oil ceased. Initially, it was running and running really well. But why did it cease? Come with me into the word. Let's open to um, 2 Kings 4, 1 to 7. 2 Kings 4, I read from 1 to 7. Now there cried a certain woman of the wives of the sons of the prophets unto Elisha, saying, Thy servant, my husband, is dead, and thou knowest that thy servant did fear the Lord, and the creditor is come to take unto him my two sons to be born men. And Elisha said unto her, What shall I do for thee? Tell me, what hast thou in the house? And she said, Thine handmaid had not anything in the house, save a pot of oil. Then he, that is Elijah, Elisha, said, Go, borrow thee vessels abroad of all thy neighbors, even empty vessels borrow not a few. For and when thou art come in, thou shalt shut the door upon thee and upon thy sons, and shalt pour out in, into all those vessels, and thou shalt set aside that which is full. So she went from him and shut the door upon her and upon her sons who brought the vessels to her and she poured out and it came to pass when the vessels were full that she said unto her son bring me yet a vessel and he said unto her there is not a vessel more and the oil stayed. Okay? The New King James Version said the oil ceased. There are very versions, various versions to it. The oil stayed. The oil ceased. The oil stopped. This is quite interesting. Some things may just stop working. Things that have been a source of joy, a source of wealth for us may stop working. But how do we stop them from working? I mean, stop them from not working. Okay? If we look at the story, the husband is referred here as the man that fears the Lord, you know, one of the sons of the prophets. He served the Lord. But it happened that it seems that he failed to do some things, you know. 
that brought about the situation of indebtedness and the creditors are now after the wife and the children they want to take the sons there are times we have lapses in our lives things we have left undone and now the repercussion but then what do we do about it it has happened but what do we do looking at where we have found ourselves now do we stop making the effort? Do we just accept the fact that the oil has stopped, that it has ceased? Do we accept that and then start living in penury or a pity party? If you consider the situation of um, Thomas Edison, the man that was usually credited for developing the light bulbs, we were made to understand that he tried a thousand times. A thousand times. I can't imagine that. But that is tenacity. He knew there was something he was getting at. So he will not be discouraged. He kept pressing on. <laughs> Sorry, I'll be a bit firm today because I'm coming to you as a management consultant. And an entrepreneur and I know what it means to try a model and it doesn't work at that point you're in a, dis in a decisive way thinking what's to do next should I just hands up and say well I'll try at least it to be said of me <laughs> that I tried or would I just go back again you know let's read more of the word so that we will lay a solid foundation on this topic a foundation that would eventually impact our lives positively okay let's look at Luke 5 the book of Luke 5 1 to 6 Luke 5 1 to 6 I read and it came to pass that as the people pressed upon him to hear the word of God, he stood by the lake, that is Jesus stood by the lake of the generous Zarat, and saw two ships standing by the lake, but the fishermen were gone out of them and were washing their nets. He had given up. They were washing their nets. Three, and he entered into one of the ships, that is Jesus, entered into one of the ships, which was Simon's, and prayed him that he would thrust out a little from the land. And he sat down and taught the people out of the ship. And when he had left speaking, he said unto Simon, launch out into the deep and let down your nets for a drought it's good to lend yourself unto the lord i find it very profitable lending myself unto the lord making myself ava available to do that which pleases the lord because the bible says that god can will owe no man it's commonly said that god will owe no man he will not be indebted to you. He's a rewarder. That's what the Bible says. God is a rewarder. So when you lend yourself to God, be sure he will reward you. And that's what we've seen here. Simon made his boat available, his ship available. And after Christ has used it for his purpose, he now blessed Simon in saying that he should launch out number five and Simon answered answering said unto him he said unto Christ master we have toiled all the night and have taken nothing nevertheless at thy word I will let down the net and when they had done this they 
enclosed a great multitude of fishes and their nets break. And their nets break. So let's go back. Whatever God has given us that is meant to be a blessing for us. Even having tried and it seems not to be working. Let us align ourselves back to God's purpose and go back again. Don't give up. Is it that business idea? Don't give up. Hit it again. Hit it again with the help of God and it will work. Because faithful is he that has promised and he will do it. Finally, let's read Agai 2, 1 to 9. Agai 2, 1 to 9. In the seventh month, in the one and twentieth day of the month, came the word of the Lord by the prophet Agai, saying, Speak now to Zerubbabel, the son of Shealtiel, governor of Judah, and to Joshua, the son of Josedek, the high priest, and to the residue of the people, saying, Who is left among you that saw this house in our first glory? And how do ye see it now? Is it not in your eyes, in comparison of it, as nothing? Yet, now be strong, O Zerubbabel, saith the Lord, and be strong, O Joshua, son of Josedek, the high priest, and be strong, all ye people of the land, saith the Lord, and walk and walk, for I am with you, saith the Lord. And walk, for I am with you, saith the Lord. We have to walk, okay? Five, according to the word that I covenanted with you, when ye came out of Egypt, so my spirit remaineth among you, fear ye not. For thus saith the Lord of hosts, yes, once it is a little while, and I will shake the heavens and the earth, and the sea and the dry land, and I will shake all nations, and the desire of all nations shall come, and I will fill this house with glory, saith the Lord of hosts. God will fill our hands with glory. God will fill the works of our hands with glory. God will fill our homes with glory. Okay? Eight, the silver is mine, and the gold is mine, saith the Lord of hosts. The glory of this latter house shall be greater than the former, saith the Lord of hosts. And in this place will I give peace, saith the Lord of hosts. Praise the Lord. The glory of the latter shall be greater than the former. That business idea that failed, the glory of the latter shall be greater than the former. The disappointment you have had even in business, in, in whatever, in ministry. The glory of the latter shall be greater than the former. So let's go out again in the spirit and the strength of the Lord. And we shall overcome. We shall be successful. And we shall be fulfilled in life. That's all I've got time for today. Thanks for sharing your time with me. Please remember to subscribe and also click the notification button so that when next I'm back, you will be the first to know. We're heading somewhere great and we shall fulfill destiny in Christ. Till next time, bye for now.